we've got an acting company of five, and then we've got Sarah, who's my wife, who runs the business in the publicity side and general everything. <laughs> and then we've got the two people who own and run the boats for us. And their job is to make sure that we get from A to B at the right time. I mean, it's no good just saying to somebody, oh, well, here's a job for you, and OK, you're out of work, great, grab this job, because it's a little more than that. And I think everybody who's come on it probably realises that it is a little more than that, because you are living very closely together and you're living a particular way of life. I saw an advertisement for actors and actresses wanted to go on this summer tour of canals, and I thought it looked interesting, so I wrote to Mike and... Um, went and did an audition, and here I am. Um, and then I went out the next night again to <laughs> see the show and meet the company. And sort of get a bit of better. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might be better. Get a bit of mutual <laughs> approval. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I mean, I'm, I'm very much the junior member of the company, obviously. So I had, uh, after those couple of meetings, I started rehearsing, and I had a week's rehearsal, which was last week. And then today is about the fifth day I've been on the boat, the fifth day I've been performing. Um, and I'm, I'm completely hooked on it. I used to look at it outside from the train on sort of nine o'clock on Monday morning and think, God almighty, the last thing I want to do is go and rehearse. I used to watch it and I thought, what a nice idea to go and uh, spend a holiday on a canal. I started, in fact, the glorious role of ASM, making tea and doing the Wonderful sets and doing are. virtually everything. We, we set it all up just to see if it could work, possibly. And we were sufficiently encouraged to think it might, and um, Anne was on that deal. And now we're out for six months. I had this great thought. I thought, um, why not combine the two things? I like canals, I like theatre. What a good idea to take theatre on, on the waterways. Because it gives you a, it gives you a sort of preordained schedule, really, because you're travelling on canals which have got villages and towns all along them. And if you if you perform in, in the towers and the villages along the route, then you've already got your venues already laid up for you. We were going to do a five-man version of As You Like It, which would have been quite interesting. We were also going to do um, a couple of modern one-act plays. Also, a review pub-type, sort of sing-song type entertainment. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get enough money together to finance four shows. We live on the boat. There's two of them. So, um, one of them's got a superstructure along its whole length. So we've got bathrooms, kitchens, bedrooms, living rooms, you know, on a small scale, but it works. Bushes grow high and you feel as though you're absolutely in the middle of nowhere and you can be in the back end of a town or, or, or anywhere. The railway's close by, the motorways are within 100 yards, perhaps, and but you've got this very, very peaceful stretch of water. What we decided to do for our first show was to do a general documentary which tries to cover the whole history uh, from, from the very beginnings of the canals in this country. Historically, we trace it through from the, the, the sort of first canal of any real note in this country, which was the Bridgewater Canal in 1750, built by James Brindley, the engineer. The engineer-in-chief and general surveyor of the New Oxford Canal at a salary of 200 pounds per annum, James Brindley. James! Yes, we never saw you. You never bothered to turn up. But you can't do that. I'm the greatest engineer there is. Have a look at Longbottom's line from Leeds to Liverpool. There's a good chap. <coughs> I consider Brindley, <coughs> the great, the fortunate, the money-getting Brindley, an object of pity. Oh, he may have made a few thousands, but what has he given in return? They should build a canal to replace the Thames, don't you think? <laughs> In the great peak period in the 1790s and early 1800s when canals were really booming and, and, and shares and profits were incredible. And then suddenly the railways come along and it hit the canals in a very bad way. A lord of steam and iron, am I a monster in the land? The devil rides upon my back and profits my command, and profits my command. The locomotive is my name and I trample on the free. Progress is my call to arms and speed my victory, and speed my victory. You didn't borrow, did you? I did not. I'm trying to work out. Oh, Joss borrowed, that's right. And I've put two in kitty. So we can have the full work. Yep. The money we take varies from um, when we charge in 
village hall type situations to right. taking collections in pubs. And then also if we're working for something like a local council or a school, then we get a guaranteed fee. And apart from that, we rely on uh, a backup subsidy, um, a, a guarantee against loss from the various regional arts associations whose areas we're passing through. But all in all, that obviously doesn't amount to enough to cover the total cost. I'm giving about 120 performances altogether, and I should reckon by the end we'll have been seen by about 30,000 people, and in all sorts of different types of situations. It seems to be working out very well. So obviously, we want to build on that next year. The question mark hanging over that at the moment is the fact that people who, who are touring with us this year, running the boats for us, may be going into commercial carrying, actually carrying coal and things like that, and good luck to them, which may leave us with no boats. But ideally, we would obviously like to have our own boats, which would set us up on a permanent basis. Where that money would come from, I'm not certain at the moment. Or the other possibility is the fact that we, we meet somebody like the people we've meet, met this year. The paddle gear is hard to draw, they bled the love gate free. The pounds are filling up with mud and getting worse each week. The dredging boats and piling gangs, but working bits and bars. Our brasses and the painted boats to hide a breaking heart. Ladies and gentlemen, for your ultimate edification and gratification, and for our finale, the company would like to present to you at the most enormous expense a melodrama in half an act. My name is Jasper Joyless. I represent everything that is good in the 20th century. Progress. I killed things in the name of progress. Ooh. <laughs> now I've got my eye on something rather nice called Waterways. Now she's ripe for plucking and filling in. I've already poured countless gallons of industrial and chemical waste into her. She's looking a bit peaky. Hello. Here she comes now. Meandering along, hundreds of years behind the times. I'm so happy. Everything on the cut is lovely. Do you know? I'm providing pleasure for over six million people every year. Oh, I'm good for many, many years. Hey, you, little out. Yeah? Hey, watch it. Come here. Would you take this note to that beautiful lady over there? Oh, yeah, all right, girl. You're a charm. Thank you very much. All right. Waterways, I love you. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? Oh, yeah, we went on a waterway holiday once to, uh, Clank... Clank... Somewhere in Wales it was, actually, I can't... Now, was that the year after we went to Torrid Molinos, or the year after we went to Majorca? I can't... Behind you! <laughs> Behind you! Oh, no, what can you want with me? Tell them! I, I'm only a poor, innocent girl! Let's talk about it, my dear. Come with me and I'll fill you in. Oh, okay. No, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Stop! You cannot do that! Oh, who are you, laddie? I am Iowa, lover of waterways. Hooray! Oh, wrong card, sorry. Hooray! <laughs> what did you put up, Boo? Hooray! Hooray! Right, thank you very much indeed. I have come to rescue her, to restore her to her former health and vigour. Sentimental poppycock. Look, I've got a lot of friends. I have a lot of money. I've got a lot of influence. I have a lot of power. We must remember our heritage. We must look to the future. The future lies on the cut. The future lies on the roads. Yeah. Keep your hands off their hours. Keep your hands off their hours. Don't swap a rose for waterways. Where men can fish and children play in transportation bays. Taking car parks away. Keep pollution from the waterways. Improve the roads with 